Friends, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we are going to begin the funeral services for Jules Kintz. If you have a cell phone or a pager, I would ask for you to please take a moment to turn it off or place it in the silent mode. And officiating today's services will be Rabbi Barry Schechter. I see there's some seats here that are not occupied. If someone would like, yeah, especially the family, the close family, maybe. Yeah. And you can sit down. Uh, Mizmole David, Adonai mi agobi alecha, mi yeshkam behar kochecha, olech tamim, ufo elat sedek, vedove remet pilvavo, loraga alishon ala salari uraa, becherpa, lona sakrovo. Nivzeving of Nimas, yet here I had on a habay. Nishpala ra, Veloyamir, Gospo, Lona Tandan Neshech, Vishohad, on a kilola ka. I'll say, Ele, Loimotli Ahulam. God, who may abide in your house, who may dwell in your holy mountain, those who are upright, who do justly, who speak the truth within their hearts, who do not slander others, or wrong them, or bring shame upon them, who give their word and come what may, do not retract, who do not exploit others, those who live in this way shall never be shaken. Dear friends, we're here for a sad and a difficult occasion to say goodbye, which is the most, one of the most difficult things we can ever do, but also to honor the memory and also to celebrate the life of Jules, Jules Kintz, the son of Esther and Harry, Yehuda Ben Sri Hirsch for Esther, who's gone to his eternal rest at the age of 93. And he's behind a family and many, many friends who loved him very dearly. First, I should mention his life's partner, his wife, Rosetta, who is here. They married for 61 wonderful years. Then we have a son, David, and his, Sandy, just sitting this way, yeah. And um, grandchildren, Jamie, uh, Jamie, sorry, and uh, her Phil, and Joey, and her Jonathan, and great-grandchildren, Andrew and Blake and Charlie and Jack. Uh, I should also mention some who, uh, others who are not here, the, her parents-in-law, uh, uh, his parents-in-law, excuse me, Bessie and Harry, and uh, late, her late sister, Marilyn, and her late husband Alvin, late brother-in-law Lenny, and his late wife Karen. There were also many, many friends, uh, Martin, Martin Haber, Max Kushner, the late Robert Schwartz, many others, nephews, nieces, cousins, friends, many, many, many people. And we're going to begin by hearing from the family. So um, we'll start with Sandy. Sandy, if you'll come up and tell us about Jules. Oh. Hi everybody. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming today. I know this is a long trek. Jules was a great father-in-law. I lost my dad before I was 20 and Jules was always there For me, he never tried to take the place of my dad, but I knew if I needed anything, I could always count on him. 
family was top priority to Jules and Rosetta. They treated my family like their family. I'll never forget the time David was running a race in the Florida Keys and I couldn't, wasn't able to go watch him because they had to take care of my sick mom. We lived in Florida at the time. Rosetta and Jules knew how important it was for me to go cheer David on and they spent a couple of days at our house taking care of my mom so I could go. Jules was a family guy. He adored his granddaughters, Jamie and Joey. Their husbands, Phil and John, were the icing on the cake. And he was so proud of all of them. And his great grandsons, Andrew, Blake, Charlie, and Jack, were the cherry <coughs> on top. He wasn't a sideline grandpa. He actually did things with them. And of course, he taught them some things that were inappropriate <laughs> along the way. Jules' home was his palace. He was so proud of his home. He would say, I live in a, I like a millionaire on an electrician's pension. We stayed with Jules for the last few years as snowbirds. He loved having us there and welcomed our friends into his home. Our friends were now his friends. Jules lived at an over 55 community called The Grove. He loved living there. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays were his card games. The other days he spent at the pool. He and his friends would walk the pool and solve all the world problems. His card buddies took care of one another. They were at his bedside until the end. He was a lucky guy, and we were lucky to have him for 93 years. Safe travels, Jules. You will be missed. P.S. At six o'clock every evening, I'll be hearing his voice saying, what's for supper, San? <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, Sandy. And uh, now, David. <coughs> Goodness, my father would be flattered. Um, so many people showed up for his funeral. When I was four years old, my mother brought me to this place, introduced me to her father who had died tragically when she was 10 years old. She mourned that loss for the rest of her life. Facing that head zone, she opened the door in the picture frame. She told me the person in the picture was Zadie Dave, her father and the person I was named for. We would visit this place on Sundays in the summertime. My grandmother's second husband, Harry, would trim the hedge while my grandmother updated her parents on the life's events, on her life's events. The area was mostly empty then. There was a catalpa tree, a concrete bench with broken pieces of colored glass embedded in the seat, and a few headstones, only three. I was fortunate to have had my father for nearly 72 years. His retirement lasted 31 years. He was initially ambivalent about retiring to Florida. I told him he'd add 10 years to his life if he moved to a warmer climate. He moved to Florida. A number of years later, after moving to Florida, my mother wanted a dog. He didn't like the idea. Again, I explained to him that if he had a dog, he'd add 10 years to his life. He got a dog. I didn't realize he was taking me seriously. He needed to be independent. It hurt him to sell his car last year. He wanted to live his last years at home in Florida. Sandy and I did all we could to assure he could live independently. When he could no longer walk unassisted, he swallowed his pride and agreed to use a cane. From a cane to a walker, from a walker to an electric scooter, he lived a full life. Only when he could no longer move on his own did he decide he'd had enough. He lived a long, fulfilling life and chose when to end it. He believed he was lucky to have lived the life he lived. He complained about many things, but never about the quality of his life. After years of taking care of my mother, he found himself alone. And for the next 12 years, he lived and managed his solitary life artfully. I admired his resilience. Let's celebrate his life. That's how he'd want it. Thank you, thank you, David. And now, um, Joey, accompanied by Jamie.
You look familiar. Don't I know you from somewhere? I will miss hearing those words, but I'm comforted to know that our grandpa didn't suffer too long. He lived a mostly healthy 93 years and wasn't afraid to call it quits when he knew his quality of life would not be what he was accustomed to. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him and his brave decision. I will miss hearing the same story over and over again. I will miss our competitive cribbage games. I will miss his Nerf gun fights with our boys and watching him play with them in the pool. I will miss him getting on the phone and saying, hi Joe, how are you? How are the boys? Sell any houses today? He was so incredibly proud of his family and always let us know and let everyone else know too. Grandpa, I promise to work hard. You gave me the strongest work ethic. I promise to love my family. Family was everything to you. I promise to live with no judgment. You were so impressed with everyone, no matter what they did. I know you and grandma are so happy to be back together. Your cruise is waiting for you. Promise us you'll spring for a cabin with a window. <laughs> One last thing, my grandpa had the most wonderful friends in the Grove. And if you are watching online, thank you so much for your friendship and kindness. Thank you, thank you all of you for those lovely words. Uh, David, you told me when we spoke on the phone, we had a wonderful conversation with you and with all of you. And you told me how you'd extended his life by 20 years. Personally, especially the bit about the dog. You see, when, we got, when I got married, my wife wanted a dog uh, because she grew up with him and I didn't want one. But after this, I've changed my mind because <laughs> there's a chance I'll extend my life by 10 years and hers by 10 years. So um, you have you, you wrought a great change in my personal life. Please don't take that seriously. <laughs> uh, it was wonderful to hear about about your family, about Jules. I say your family, I'll tell you why. Because I, you know, we, we grow up, we talked about this, we grow up and we think the way our family is, that's, that's the way the rest of the world is. And then we grow up and go out into the world and find out, no, 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 very, very different. So I grew up with one grandparent who I couldn't really communicate with. And you're, t you're telling me, first of all, when I'm writing down the names, okay, I'm writing down. Child, son, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Usually if I had great-grandchildren, they're two months old or something like that. It's, it's unbelievable. And not only that, but it extends backwards because you, you were saying how your mum brought you here and you you look back so we've got generation on top of generation sort of familiar with each other if you knew them or if you if you knew where they where they were buried it's unbelievable this chain it's so wonderful because you know we live you know that horrible phrase the nuclear family I, when i heard that phrase i thought you know there's an explosion about to happen but a, a nuclear family is small you know well, it's not large sort of horizontally you know it's not their millions of brothers and sisters but great-grandchildren are you here the great-grandchildren where are you listen you you when you're older you'll realize you had something extraordinary maybe you realize it now already but you will realize it it's something wonderful and you 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 had grandparents who were like parents like a second second of parents and they spoil you more right that's the function of grandparents it's written in a law somewhere <laughs> The grandparents spoil. They don't have any of the grief. They have uh, the fun. Uh, as you know, um, he was, um, he grew up on the west side of Chicago, which is a very large Jewish area at one time. And um, he was in the Navy. Uh, he, was, he married, of course, the love of his life. Uh, he was in the electrical union and he was very, very gregarious. Now, I, I don't know if you know this, if you can't see this, but Sandy is sitting. Sandy looks like a dealer in Las Vegas. She is holding several decks of cards. Okay, and now you're going to ask me, and, and the one that's face up is the one that I was thinking of, right? So, 
she's, she's wonderful with card tricks. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Because he loved to play gin rummy. You said some special system, right? They played boxes. I don't know. Boxes, whatever. They, whatever they they what else? Did they play other games as well? Poker. They play poker. And so to keep him company, uh, this is going to go into the into the grave. Uh, he was, as you as you said when you spoke, uh, Joy. He was so encouraging and supportive, and he really was. I mean, he was a wonderful electrician. Uh, he did all kinds of work, and part of the time he worked with you, David. Right? You were, you were working together. But the thing is, he really in a sense, missed his vocation because he should have been in PR, in public relations. Because, for ex I'll just give an example. Uh, Joey, you are in real estate. When he spoke about Joey, you would have thought that there was one major real estate broker in the whole of Illinois, and that was his daughter-in-law. And there were a few others of, of no significance at all, right? And the Jamie, I'm sure the same for you, whatever you did, Whatever anyone did, he he would exaggerate wonderfully. He could actually, you know what else he could have been? It just occurs to me, it's a traditional Jewish thing. He could have been a marriage broker. <laughs> you know, they'll say, well, this woman, is she, is she beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Marilyn Monroe was jealous of her. I mean, this sort of thing. So that was, that was his way. That was his way of, uh, of, of showing his love, actually. Of showing his love for you. But he would, he would exaggerate wonderfully, adorn, embroider, and tell you stories, as you said, he would tell you stories, and because you liked it, he'd tell it to you again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Uh, he liked to watch Jeopardy, and he was actually very, very good at it, even though, you know, he didn't have a massive education, a formal education. Um, he was had this, as you say, this incredible work ethic, uh, which you you inherited. Um, the Joey, I think your friends, maybe your friends too, all called him grandpa. He was like a, he was like a grandfather to an entire generation. Now I'm talking like him, you see. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. I start talking about a person, I become like them for a little bit. Um, when people came uh, to see other people, friends would come to see their parents, they would see their parents, maybe their grandparents, and immediately leave them and say, I have to see Jules, right? Yeah. Always. Uh, and you said that he had this ability that if he met you, he, he made you feel important. He made you feel important because he would listen, he'd listen to you, he learn about you, and so you, you felt, you know, not like the politician shaking hands, you know, very nice to meet you, and he's looking over there. No, no, he was looking at you, he was listening to you, and he wanted to know about you. And as you say, the, the great-grandchildren called him Jules. I mean, this was, uh, quite, now he was, he had a very interesting relationship with the English language. Um, certain words were somehow changed like synagogue became synagogue, which I think is rather nice, actually. The treadmill became threadmill. Any tailors in the family? <laughs> um, he was very funny, as you said. He, uh, he uh, would make jokes. Did he repeat them? I'm not sure, yes, he did. Um, now, when you spoke, you said that he taught the, was it the grandchildren or the great-grandchildren things, and some were inappropriate. I was waiting for you to give some examples. I have one, but I can't say. You can't <laughs> Write it down now and pass it around. <laughs> he drove, as you said, you said, David, he drove till he was 91, and he was very, very generous because, he really was very, very generous because he donated many side view mirrors to the Florida streets. <laughs> but he was such a modest man. You know, some people who, who donate, they tell you, you know what, I donated. You know, and others are modest, you know. I mean, he would deny his generosity. <laughs> he would say, you, you do all these mirrors. He said, no, I didn't do it. So this is wonderful. He was, he was gen generous 
and genuine and humble about it. Um, you tell me, of course, growing up, I know it wasn't so easy for you, David, uh, he, was, he would work, he could work seven days, right? He would work often. Um, he would barter, you know, he was, they were very, very active in B'nai Munna in Skokie, right? Uh, Rabbi Stern, Cantor Stearns, Rabbi Stern married you. It was Cantor Stearns there as well at the wedding. I see, I see, it was a relatively peaceful wedding. I mean, from the point of view of the clergy, people don't understand what I'm saying. Um, and he would barter, he, did, he didn't actually have to pay membership for the synagogue because he did the, he did all the electrical work for them which is very nice, and he actually got a certificate of which he was very proud at 70 years, 70 years in the electrical union. That is really nice. Um, I think they went on cruises, many, many cruises. They liked to go on cruises. Um, there were discussions. They'd have discussions. You could talk to him, and they were enjoyable. Um, now, his eating habits are interesting. Um... He had a very Jewish relationship with Chinese food, but it was not limited to Christmas. It was not limited to Christmas Eve, which is traditional. I mean, it was it was all year round Chinese food. But as you said to me, I said, "Well, Chinese food, that's okay." You said, "Unfortunately, he liked the Chinese buffet." And you you actually put him on a on a very healthy diet. So, in addition to prolonging his life by by 10 years by sending him to Florida and by another 10 years by making sure he got a dog, you actually prolonged his life by looking after him wonderfully, whatever your experience was growing up, looking after him by getting him to change his diet, um, everything, the mats on the floor that wouldn't slip so he was safe. And also what you, the family, did for him, you especially, he wanted to, as you said, to die in place. He didn't want to he wanted to be in his home. He didn't want to be anywhere else. And so you, with great effort and love and conscientiousness, you did everything you could and succeeded in making sure that he was where he wanted to be. He was where he wanted to be. And that too may have contributed to his longevity because we've all seen it, I've seen it, you've seen it. You know, if you move someone who doesn't want to move, at a late age, first of all, at a late age, any change is difficult. But if they don't want to move, it's more than difficult. It's, it's, it's tragic. And that can shorten their lives. But that didn't happen with him. No, he was where he wanted to be. So, uh, this, is a, this is a remarkable man. First of all, he was blessed to see all these generations. Uh, to have two, two grandchildren, who like children, to have great-grandchildren. But you were blessed to have him, you who were his family, you who were his friends, you had this, you had this wonderful, this, this person who was, so, who you, you were happy to be with him, you were happy to be with him, as you said, he also gave you a work ethic, which is, which is something, something wonderful, and so he, look, he lived a good life, he had a long and happy retirement, he had all these friends, friends in Florida, um, he enjoyed playing games, and as you, I think you just told me that before you started, that his needs were relatively simple. He didn't need great luxury. Some of us do, you know. You see the car I bought. You see, no, he, he wasn't like that at all. So his needs were simple. So he was a happy man. He was, to use another word that's not used much now because we don't see it much. From what you're telling me, you can correct me if I'm wrong. A contented man. He was contented. Isn't it interesting we don't hear that word much now? You know why? Because there isn't that much of it around. He's a contented man. It's a saying in, in Pirkei Avot, in Ethics of the Fathers. Ezehu Ashir, who is rich, hasameach bechelko. One who is happy, who is contented with his lot. In that sense, we are honoring today and we are celebrating the life of a very, very rich man in that wonderful sense. So of him I say, Tahenishmato Tsurura Pitsror Hachayim, you know Chaim is life. May his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. And to him I say, Jewels, Yehuda, Leich Beshalom, 
gay and free, go in peace. Hobbelechtigen an Eden, may your repose be in paradise. You will never be forgotten. You'll always be remembered in love by those who knew you and loved you and those whom you knew and you loved. Amen. And now, we're going to read the 23rd Psalm. If you open these little, do you all have these little booklets? If someone doesn't, would you indicate and the director will give you... Yeah. This, does everyone have one? Good. So if you open it up on the left side at the top, the 23rd Psalm, would you read with me, please? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now, um, I'm going to ask you, if you can, to rise, please. David, could you come here, please? I would come to you normally, but I think we have people watching, so let them see this. I'm going to cut your ribbon, which is a sign of mourning, you know, and then we say a bracha together. So let's just do this. So let's say this blessing together. It begins the way every blessing does. Yeah, I'll tell you the special words at the end. So with me. Baruch. Hello. Dayan. Ho emes which means, blessed be the true judge. That's what we say when we say it. Let's see if it remains standing. Hamseim <laughs> Et Nishma Yehuda ben Zvi Hersh ve Esther Shalach Lulamau Bavuul Shadnach Nodrim Yitzdaka Beheyad Haskarat Nishmato Pagan Eden Tiemen Uchato Rachain mala rachamim, yasti reyu besede kanav leolamim, vietzeror, vietzeror rachaim et nishmato, Adunai unachalato, yano abe shalom amishkavo, yano mahar ahamein. Passionate gods, eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Jules Kintz, the son of Esther and Harry, who has entered eternity and in whose memory we offer charity. May his repose be in paradise. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. And now we will conclude the prayer part of the service with the mourner's Kaddish, which is on the back of these booklets, in Hebrew letters at the top of the page, in English letters on the lower half of the page. Please join if you can. If you don't join, you can respond. One of the responses is very simple. When we say, V'imru, you say, Amen. We say, V'imru, you say Amen. So please do that. We'll begin. Yit Kadal Vit Kadash Shemei Raba. Be Alma Divra Hirute. Vayam Lich Malchute. Bechaye Chon of Yome Chon. Bechaye de Chol Beit Yisrael. Bagala Uvisman Kariv. Va im Ru, everyone. Amen. Yehe Shemei Raba. Mevarach le alam mulal mel maya. Yit barach vi ishtabach, vi yit paar vi yit romam vi yit nasei. 
Wie ta da, wie ta le, wie ta lal, schmede kutscha, griechu. Le eila min kol, birchata, vishirata. Tushbechata, venechemata. Da mi ran bi alma, ve im ru. Amen. Yehe shlama raba, min shemaya. Ve chayim aleinu, ve al kol Yisrael, ve im ru. Amen. O se shalom bim romav. Hu ya ase shalom. Aleinu vi al kol Yisrael ve imru. Amen. Friends, uh, in a, just a few minutes the casket will be lowered, uh, covered, and we'll be able to place some earth on in accordance with Jewish tradition. But you'll do that in just a just. But um, we have some special earth here. This Jewish people traditionally wanted to be buried in Israel, which obviously is not always possible. So we bring earth here from Israel. This earth comes from Jerusalem, from the Har Hazetim, the Mount of Olives, ancient and sacred cemetery there. And I'm going to sp sprinkle some of this on the casket. So in a sense, he's going to be buried in Israeli earth. I just ex said to uh, Sandy that when we've lowered the casket, she can place the cards on in no special order. Put it on after. After. Really? 
see the cards when they're going to do. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's a con. That's a con. He's 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 a This time we'll invite, beginning with the family, to come forward. Um, we'll hand out some cards. Sure. And um, you could cast a, a card or two into the grave, um, and then uh, approach the grave from either side using the shovel. Deal, Jeremy. Deal. Face down. Face down. Face down. Everybody come back. 
back. Oh, we should have announced that everybody come back. <laughs> Everybody come back. Yeah, they said tomorrow. They said it's nine to six. Yes, up there. It's not. It's tonight. No, it's tonight forever. I mean, forever. And friends, forever. Just so that everyone's aware. There was a little omission. Um, the ship is going to begin uh, today upon the return from the cemetery through this evening, as well as tomorrow beginning at 6 p.m. at the Kins residence at 4212 Kayla Lane in Northbrook. <laughs> I said he had names for everybody. And friends, this concludes the live stream at this time. Thank you.